Welcome to another episode of What's Up with Wendy. My special guest today, best known as Jay Peterman on Seinfeld, he is one of television's busiest and most versatile actors. John O'Hurley is my special guest today. And this podcast is brought to you by the number one weighted blanket in the world, My Blankwell. Listen in at the end of this interview for a limited time only special offer. He was part of one of television's greatest cast as Jay Peterman on Seinfeld. Actor, singer, author, comedian, and so much more. Joining me to talk about his one-man show and more, welcome John O'Hurley. Well, good morning. What a wonderful introduction. I don't know if I can live up to all of that. (laughs) You will. You will. You have the greatest voice of any person. Well, you know, the irony of that is my voice was the last one to change in high school. For you to say that means a lot to me. Thank you. Oh, wow. Really? Was that true? True story? I, I had to suffer. I had to suffer the uh, the embarrassment of one of those little squeaky voices up till I was about uh, 15 years old. Wow. That must have been painful in high school, right? Uh, well, you know, it, it was what it was. It's but, high school. It's high but school. I was lucky enough to, you know, I was growing up at the time and uh, most of my life was in Hartford, West Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, and uh, so I was, uh, at the time, in the late 60s, I was wrapped around some of the great DJ voices in all of music, Dick Robinson and Sandy Beach and all these, all of these, uh, these great DJs back in the, uh, the golden age of rock and roll and radio there. And uh, I think a lot of my vocal intonations came from listening to them. Wow. Wow. So you're going to be in your kind of in your old neighborhood. You're going to be at the Ridgefield Playhouse this Sunday, January 26th, with your one man show, A Man with Standards. I love the name, the title. How did you come up with that and why? Well, very simply, I do a show with the standards, the songs from the that we recognize from the Great American Songbook, uh, Moon River, Henry Mancini, Sinatra, uh, uh, songs like Beyond the Sea, and I, I take a collection of all of that great music of the fifties and sixties, a big band music, and uh, I use it to underscore the stories of my life that were going on, not only at that time but at other periods of life um, uh, it, when uh, when I was on Broadway and then uh, Seinfeld and and. The the years following, and I use that time. I use those that music to really to underscore and, and to uh, it's uh, and, and in that respect, it makes it uh, a lot of fun. It's very funny. It's great music, and uh, and there's only one tear. Only one tear. So I promise, only one tear in the show. Only one tear. So it's storytelling, songs, and humor, and it's always sold out when you do the, you do these shows all over. I just finished uh, the, uh, I was just out uh, two nights ago in La Mirada in California, uh, doing the show there, beautiful sellout there, um, and it was just, uh, what a wonderful crowd. Oh, they just, uh, they just loved it. It's just an unusual show. It hits you in a different way. Very few people come in and tell stories anymore, and I'm a storyteller. I always have been. That was the nature of Jay Peterman on Seinfeld. He was a storyteller, and um, I've had so many of, of crazy, quirky things happen in my life that um, it's been fun to bring them to the stage and and uh, wrap them around music that uh, is so um, inspiring and memorable. You're so right. People do not tell stories anymore. It's so true. It's sad. It isn't. Yeah, it isn't. Yeah. I mean, I go back. I talk about my days in West Hartford when my mother would go to the beauty parlor every Saturday morning and get her hair done. Uh, and it would come back, uh, with, you know, with something the consistency of a chafing dish. Um, and then they would go out for dinner at night. My dad had his little skinny tie, and they would go out to, to a, a, a steakhouse in West Hartford, Delmonico's, and uh, they would have every, every – this was every weekend. They'd go for dinner and dancing. They always had a little combo band there, and they'd go for their same steak every week, same martini, and, and they would dance their dance to the same music. That uh, And it was just uh, – that's what they did. It was dinner and dancing, and that is uh, – that sadly disappeared. So I like to bring back that uh, that that little slice of nostalgia with not only the music but the stories because I feel that it was a time of style and swing and elegance and uh, and uh, as I say, I, it's it's called a man with standards because I was lucky enough to grow up grow up around men who had standards. Oh my God, times are so different now. You're telling that story about your parents, and like you're right, people used to. My, yes. and my, I look at pictures of my parents, and they were always so dressed up, and there was glamour, and it was just, it was so different then. It was a time. It, 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 it was a time of being a gentleman meant something. 
being a lady meant something. And there was an elegance and a, there was music. The music and the manners were indistinguishable. As I, as I kind of laughingly say, luck was a lady. We danced cheek to cheek and love was a many splendid thing. Oh, beautiful. If you just know, I'm talking to John O'Hurley. He's going to be at the Ridgefield Playhouse, one of my favorite places, by the way. This Sunday, January 26th, his show, A Man with Standards. For tickets, 203-438-5795. It's a thoughtful autobiography with song and storytelling, which I love. Um, I, even, I can just, you, I, you can feel it when you're, t- when you're talking about it, too. Um, it, it was, uh, and, it, and, you know, I think with the, the people, uh, the audience, there at Richfield will will come to understand is that so much of this is local flavor because I grew up 20 years of my life in Connecticut um, over the border as well for a few years in uh, in outside of Boston I lived um, so and then uh, you know my first steps on uh, on the Broadway stage were just uh, you know uh, just down the road in, in New York City so it's all it has a wonderful local flavor and and I'll add even one more level into it is that. Uh, not many people will remember this, but be- I took six years off before I became an actor out of college. And I went into public relations, and I was director of public relations for Waterbury Hospital in Waterbury, Connecticut. Oh, wow. Just up the road from the Ridgefield Playhouse. I don't think I ever knew that. Yeah, yeah wow. I was. Yeah. So it- and I'm a director for for several years, director of, um, of the uh, public relations for the Red Cross in Farmington. Yeah, I, my fingerprints are all around the state. Oh, my. Wow. So can we reflect back a little bit about Seinfeld? How much mm-hmm. did that change your life, and what do you miss the most? Well, I was playing with the championship team in the championship season. I don't think there's ever been a cast assembled that was quite um, as talented or as intelligent as uh, as the four of them. Um, and it was it, you just knew you were in St. Peter's Cathedral when you were there and uh, either rehearsing or doing the show. And you knew that you were going to be part of something that your grandchildren would be watching with you. And I can't say that about any other show that I've done. Um, It was just blessed with permanence, and time has uh, proven me correct, Uh, not only domestically but internationally. It's um, syndicated in 85 countries, so you really can't go anywhere in this world now and, and not be recognized for the achievements of that show. Do people walk up to you all the time still and say, Peterman, Peterman, and can they, do they ask you oh, to say, that, do something? Oh, not only that, they, they, <laughs> quote, they quote lines perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a favorite episode? Well, you know, I do. Um, I, I mean, I, I loved a lot of the things, but I thought the, I, I thought the Friars Club episode um, was especially good uh, when Rob Schneider was playing my hard of hearing assistant. But my favorite one, I think, was the, the wedding cake episode, which was also the Frogger episode. Because I think that that was just one of the best executed scripts that we did. The the idea of George um, chasing his uh, Frogger score, his you know, lifetime achievement, um, uh, if, uh, at a pizza parlor that was now closing, and he had to save that Frogger machine <laughs> because that had his high score on it, which was the only thing he ever... Um, the only great moment in his life, and as he turned to Jerry once said so whimsically, he goes, Jerry, I'm never going to have kids. This is all I have. <laughs> was it easy for you to get into character all the time? Oh, yeah, the character. And, and actually, it was easier to, to watch the character develop. And I, I mean, he just became a crazier and just a more and more, um, more and more of a walking lunatic. <laughs> I, I read that you said that Jay Peterman came naturally to you. Well, it really did. Um, you know, he was, it, it, and again, it goes back to a little bit of, I mean, you could probably hear one of those disc jockeys uh, in the background, you know, right. um, just uh, that I grew up with in Connecticut. Uh, just that sense of those, you know, huge, melodic, almost musical voices. And that's really where Peterman developed a little bit. He was uh, kind of a 40s radio drama combined with a little bit of a bad Charles Kowalt. Um and I think that was kind of the genesis of the character. What an amazing journey that lives on. Do you still, we did many of your scenes, most of your scenes, I think, with Julia, right? Most of them there, yeah, a little bit with uh, Kramer, some with Jerry. And I mean, we, 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 I, I worked with all, you know, obviously with all of them. But uh, there was definitely a Mary Tyler Moore, Lou Grant type of, uh, of connection yes. uh, between uh, she and I, I at a more absurd level. Do you all keep in touch? Oh, sure. Yes. I see Jerry all the time. Just was in New York with him. So fun. Doing a uh, doing a little uh, little Seinfeld thing at uh, um, 
uh, over on uh, the Upper West Side there at the Beacon Theater, and uh, had some yeah, I've just had some wonderful experiences with all of them. And the and the, the business is a very small business, so it uh, you know there's only a few of us in it at any one time. Amazing. If you just tuned in, I'm talking to John O'Hurley. He's going to be in our neighborhood, the Ridgefield Playhouse, this Sunday, A Man with Standards, a thoughtful autobiography with song. Um, what an amazing night that's going to be. Are you, do you, you, must, you can tell that you love doing what you do. Well, I loved, and I love doing this show. It's just so much fun uh, to get out on stage and uh, with this wonderful, little, wonderful band that I have um, to recreate the music and, and to really sit down and just tell stories just very, in, in a very real sense uh, and sing the glorious music of the time. And it relaxes the audience, um, and, and they know that they're going to have fun. From the second I walk on stage, I make them laugh and um I let them know that they're in good hands and we're going to have a good 90 minutes together. An evening not to be missed, for sure. Is there anything that you can talk about that's coming up with you? Uh, well, I have a lot of uh, fun stuff. Uh, I'm actually over here today on, on Shop HQ, the home uh, shopping channel, oh. uh, because I've uh, premiered a new uh, show called the, the Pet Shop with John O'Hurley, and it's uh, celebrating because I am the host of the National Dog Show, as I've been doing that for 19 years now. Um, and uh, so I have a, my my potpourri of, uh, of great pet products uh, that I've selected from all over the world. And uh, in addition to that, I have a new show on HGTV that's going to be called Buy Like a Billionaire, which is a game show that allows a couple of average means to um, peruse uh, billion-dollar homes and uh, and try to discover which one was purchased recently, most recently by a certain millionaire. Oh, fun! And uh, if they get if they get it right, then the uh, show pays off their mortgage for the rest of the year. So it's a it's a fun uh, combination of what HGT does really well, uh, along with a wonderful game show um, theme to it as well. So fun. The National Dog Show. We spoke, I think, once before about that. You've been doing that for so long. What was it about that? Yeah. You, you... This is year 19 coming up. It's, uh, you know, who knew uh, that this two-hour slice of programming right after the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and right before football was going to be so ripe for something as crazy as a dog show. And one of the it most to, watched You know, they shows. used to get... Uh, they used to get ratings of less than a million watching reruns of It's a Wonderful Life. And Amazing. They put that in there, and lo and behold, we now have 82 million people that watch that show. Um, it's uh, We've been very, very lucky. Amazing. Well, what a, what, what a wonderful day to talk to you. Thank you so much. John O'Hurley is going to be at the Ridgefield Playhouse this Sunday, A Man with Standard. You won't want to miss it. Thank you so much for all those great, great stories. Great to talk with you. Thanks so much. You bet. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my podcast channel for weekly interviews and please tell your friends. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Wendy Lowy Sloan. That's Wendy Lowy Sloan, W-E-N-D-Y-L-O-W-Y-S-L-O-A-N-E. And on Facebook, What's Up With Wendy? And for a limited time only, you can get the number one weighted blanket in the world for 40% off. Use code WENDY for 40% off myblankwell.com. That's myblankwell, B-L-A-N-Q-U-I-L.com for a limited time only, 40% off with the code WENDY.